Hi, in the last video, we built a question answering system using a BERT pre-trained model. What we did is we took a bunch of PDF files. These are Amazon quarterly financial statements. And then we fitted our uh, PDF files against the BERT pre-trained model. And then we were able to ask more kind of a natural language question uh, to, uh, to the model and get responses based on the PDF documents. Now, in case if you are not seeing the video, you can click the link on the top and watch it. You can also check the video description uh, where I have pasted the video link as well as the notebook code for it, which you can take it and try it out. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to take that model that we built, basically the uh, pre-trained model uh, plus the PDF document that we fitted it against. And then we are going to deploy it as a web application using Streamlit. And that's what we are going to do. And let's go and see how we can deploy that model. So let's get started. What I'm doing is I am importing the joblib package. Basically joblib is nothing but uh, nothing but a package to serialize and deserialize uh, Python objects. So in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, load the BERT model that we have saved in the previous video. And in the top, I have mentioned the command to save the BERT model. So this is the thing. Uh, basically, I'm just calling the job lib top dump. CDQA pipeline is the closed domain question answering pipeline that we created uh, based on the PDF document that we had. And I'm just giving an output uh, model file name. I'm just telling it's BERT underscore QA custom dot job lib. Now, uh, this is already there in my notebook, which is there in the video description below uh, already. Now, in case if you don't have a GPU, basically what I did is I trained the model using GPU. And if you're going to take the model as it is and run only this command, then you need to have a GPU for inference as well. If you do not have a GPU for inference, if you have only CPU, then add this particular first line where I, before calling the job lib top dump, you need to just say like CDQA dot pipeline to CPU. So basically this torch model, what we are doing is internally, it's a torch model. We are just telling convert it to, to a CPU so that we can inference on a CPU and then call the job lib dot dump method. Yeah, that's what we are going to do. So uh, for that, I'm using job lib to uh, basically load the model. I am using request to just the handle incoming request from the web application and streamlit uh, basically uh, to deploy our application as a web app, right? So you need to basically install streamlit, uh, uh, pip install streamlit. So before running this code, and then what I'm doing is I'm just calling the streamlit some of the options, like basically don't show any deprecation warning and all in the web app. And then I am setting a title calling a question answering web app. So basically I'm just giving some HTML kind of tags here. I'm telling the title for the web app is question answering web app. And below that I'm putting a text like, what would you like to know about Amazon today? Basically since our model was trained on Amazon documents, I'm just uh, given what you want to know about Amazon today. You can ask any natural language question. Now, it's not necessary. It must be Amazon. You can even pull in uh, financial documents from Google. You can pull in financial documents from Microsoft and uh, yeah, keep it together and then fit the uh, fit the BERT model so that you can ask question from any organization. Right now, you can also have your own business document over here. So you can just take any of your uh, documents that you generate as part of the company and also try it out. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called load model. And in the load model, what I'm doing is I have already downloaded this model, uh, BERT underscore QA custom in my local. You can see it over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load that model. I'm calling job lib dot load while saving. I use job lib dot dump. I am just loading the model and that will give me a model object. This will basically give me an uh, basically an uh, closed domain QA package that we used a pipeline object of that. And I am returning the model over here. I am adding an additional command called HD dot cache. I don't want this function to be called every time I get an incoming request. Uh, basically, uh, model loading takes a lot of time. So I want to load it once when the application starts. And then I want to kind of cache the model for further use. And that's what I'm calling ht.cache over here. 
right so i have this function then what i am going to do is i am going to uh, load the model into memory and for that i am just using like model equal to load model so i am calling this function it will return a model but just uh, since sometimes it, the model loading may take time the model is very big so i am just calling an st dot spinner which will uh, tell me like loading model in memory it just for uh, more like information perspective right and finally i will get the model object now with this model object what i am going to do is i am going to create a web app uh, it's already web app i am going to create add and text box over that where i can enter the queries that i have and that's what i am uh, put over here i am telling that streamlit dot text input basically it's going to ask me a text input and then i am asking enter your questions here and that will give me a text object if the text is present right then what i am doing is i am uh, writing response over here i am just printing response over here and again i am calling the spinner object uh, because like uh, if i am running on cpu uh, getting an answer will take time if you are running on gpu it will be instantaneous so in this case like while is searching for answer i am just showing okay searching for answer and then within the with clause i am calling the model object this model object is that dot predict and passing the text as input so basically i can ask a question what is my uh, what is my current revenue and that text will go as input over here and i call model dot predict it will go against all the corpus and then tell me what is the revenue and then it will also tell me what document it is present and what is the exact paragraph it is present so that's why i am having this three rights over here i am getting the prediction object output and i am uh, basically what i am doing is i am uh, kind of first printing the answer the prediction of 0 will be the answer the prediction of 1 will be the title title is nothing but what document it is present the name of the document um, and the next one is the prediction 2 will be the paragraph where is it present basically if it says like okay the revenue of amazon is some uh, million dollars it will exactly read out the entire paragraph Uh, where it is present, so that you can go and uh, look it up further. You don't want to go and search each and every document if you have hundreds of document. So that's why this is. And after that, I'm just right doing an empty right. So this is what our Streamlit application is. Now to run the Streamlit application, basically what I'm going to do is I am I have mentioned the command over here. Basically, I'm calling the Streamlit uh, uh, Streamlit command. I'm calling the run. i am calling the file name qa app.py this file name that i have is qa app.py i am also adding this id uh, additional command i am using a cloud shell editor google cloud and google cloud typically blocks cross uh, cross reference uh, javascript commands right so i am just telling it enable it uh, to false by default it is true but if you are running on your local or if you are running on any other place you can just leave it off it's not necessary you need to have this Okay, that's where uh, the stream is. So I'm going to take this command, and then I'm just going to do Control C. I'm going to paste it here and start the web application. So once I start it, it's going to by default uh, start it in eight five zero. If you see over here, it's starting in eight five zero one port uh, over here. So now what I'm going to do is the uh, app is started. Uh, it just printing some future warnings. Uh, you can suppress the warnings if you want. It is just telling like upgrade to latest version of Pytorch, but that's fine. You can ignore it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the web app. So if you are in Google Cloud platform, if you are in other platform, you can just say localhost colon eight five zero one or your IP address colon eight five zero one. In Google Cloud platform, to see it outside of your Google Cloud network. Uh, if you don't have an uh, specific static IP setup, you can just go here. By default, it will preview on port eighty eighty, but our port is eighty fifty one. I can change port. I can go and type eighty fifty one over here, and then I can say change a preview, and it will open the web app. So now this is the web app that is opened. If you see, like we are printed title and then some text and enter your questions here. Uh, so basically, it's opened in eight five zero one port, and this is the interface. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some. uh questions over here right so let me start it this question is going to be regarding amazon because the document that we index is about amazon let me ask the first question like how many uh full time em full time employees are on amazon payroll okay so what it's going to do is uh, once i commit it it's going to go and search for answers it's going to take some time as uh, i am running on cpu let's wait for it to come back
So now you see the response is over here. It's telling like, okay, uh, the answer is 650,000 employees Amazon has. And this has taken from this particular document, Q2 2020 Amazon earning release. And if you see, it also gives the exact paragraph where it is present. It gives the entire snapshot so you can read more rather than going and searching in the document. In this case, if you see over here, yeah, uh, it comes here. Amazon introduced a new family, a family backup care benefit through care.com to 650,000 full and part time Amazon and whole food market employees in the US. So basically, you can see how it has picked up that particular word from the PDF document. Right. Let me go ahead and ask one more question. Right, because this is a financial statement. Let me ask like how much is increase in increase in operating cash flow? Okay, so let's wait for the answer to come back. So now you can see like basically it is telling the increase in operating cash flow is 16% and uh, it is part of the Q1 2020 earning release where it says okay the cash flow is basically for the trailing two months over here it's a 16% operating cash flow right you can you can what what you can uh, basically in this case um, also do is you can ask for multiple outputs so sometimes what will happen uh, the same thing can be you know it will be there in all the financial statement in this case what i'm doing is i'm selecting only one but you can tell like um, uh, n matches as five or ten so everything you can see online but i'm just showing for one you can see my uh, training video that i may have mentioned in the youtube description where i have told you you how to call the credit function with uh, three or five occurrences right so basically you can ask any question which is there in this particular financial document and it was pretty simple we didn't actually train something we just uh, used a pre-trained model we took the data we fitted against the pre uh, fitted the pdf against the pre-trained model and we are able to ask natural questions from it so that's about it thank you very much